The bad thing about television is that everybody you see on television is doing something better than what you're doing. If you look at the increase in brain size leading to the advent of humans, you'll notice that brain size suddenly started to increase rapidly around 2 million years ago. It's a bit of a mystery what we exactly needed all that brain power for. Though British anthropologist Robin Dunbar proposes that the brain grew so large to keep up with the complex social demands put on the brain. Social dynamics are incredibly important to primates and people, of course. If you've ever felt awkward at a party, excited during a date, or incredibly stressed during a business meeting, you'll know that social interactions can drastically change the internal state of our bodies. Science has found that a 5-15 to 15 minute conversation with an unfamiliar woman can raise a man's testosterone. Exercise releases feel-good endorphins, but exercising in a group releases more of these endorphins. Sports fans get a testosterone rise just from seeing their team win. And men experience a drop or rise in testosterone when they experience some sort of social defeat or social victory. What's interesting is how status directly affects testosterone levels. Studies on rams and primates has found that you can understand quite accurately where each male ram or monkey falls on the social status hierarchy just by comparing their testosterone levels. Higher status means higher testosterone. And yes, in humans, it's been found that a man's status within an organization correlates with his testosterone. For example, a CEO would have higher testosterone than a manager. While not everyone likes to admit it, we all keep stock of who we feel is higher or lower in status compared to ourselves. Monkeys are so concerned with status that they will in fact pay monkey currency, cherry juice, to see pictures of higher status male monkeys, or attractive female monkeys. Now, if you've found yourself on Instagram paying your time and attention to cooler people doing cooler stuff than you, maybe you know how these monkeys feel. If you think about it, it makes sense for monkeys to be preoccupied with what's going on with higher status monkeys. If you don't pay attention and wow. overstep your bounds and anger a high ranked monkey, this could provoke an attack. So for me, while understanding what's going on with Dan Bilzerian or Ryan Reynolds will not benefit me in any way, some part of my brain still keeps me interested in what these high status people are doing. It seems that Instagram is scratching an itch that is naturally hardwired into our brains. Yet a survey of almost 1500 British people aged 14 to 24 suggests that of the different social media platforms, Instagram has the most negative effect on mental health. This got me interested in Instagram's potential effect on testosterone. Lately, it seems like men are really interested in optimizing their testosterone. With good reason, higher testosterone is associated with more muscle, less fat, stronger bones, and increased confidence and better mood. There's all kinds of supplements, diet plans, and workout plans that are supposed to increase testosterone. So sure, you could eat more cholesterol and healthy fats, do sprints and leg workouts, but I feel that how social dynamics affect testosterone is not as often talked about. Testosterone is very responsive to wins. Victory! Testosterone raises after all kinds of wins. When you win money, win at sports, or win at chess, your testosterone will raise. One study even found hockey players experiencing a 40% rise in testosterone just from watching a video of them winning a past game. I don't do it for the fight. I freaking hate to fight. You think I like to fight in a cage in front of a million of people, maybe get humiliated, knocked out? I don't like to fight. Are you nuts? I like to win. When you win, you're, it's, the feeling is unbelievable. It's so good that it's worth this. Yeah. Testosterone has been shown to raise men's interest in women. And at the same time, testosterone makes people more comfortable with directly greeting and engaging with strangers. So testosterone changes your behavior in all kinds of ways. It makes you more likely to engage in so-called dominance challenges. Master of the house, don't let the child. Ready with the down, chorus boy. And if you win these Dominus challenges, then it will raise your testosterone even further. A common Dominus challenge for primates, including humans, is maintaining angry eye contact. 
So uh, Steve would do this as well. He'd say, so Hector, um, so you're really, you're really close with your dad, huh? Mm-hmm. Got to hold the gaze. Don't say anything. People get so uncomfortable. So it was his litmus test to determine if you were a bozo or not. Unsurprisingly, the very highly socially ranked billionaire and face of Apple, Steve Jobs, exhibited high testosterone-like behaviors like a primal staring contest. So what would raise testosterone more? Supplements and exercise or beating your boss in some sort of sales competition and getting a promotion and a raise? Or how much would defeating your opponent in a physical dominance challenge and then raising your social rank increase your testosterone? There's some interesting research on testosterone and social anxiety. Social anxiety could be characterized as a very drastic form of subordination. That is, you perceive your status to be so low that you subordinate yourself to most everyone and new people become scary. So primates and humans like Steve Jobs assert dominance by maintaining angry eye contact until the opponent averts their gaze. Socially anxious people are especially uncomfortable with eye contact. Yet researchers found that giving socially anxious people testosterone drastically increases how comfortable they are with staring back at an angry face. Also, women with social anxiety have been found to have lower testosterone and other studies found that giving people testosterone increases these so-called dominance behaviors, behaviors that are essentially the opposite of socially anxious subordination behaviors. Now, defeat can be a depressing cycle, literally. As this paper points out, maintaining social hierarchies is generally cyclical, where repeated defeat leads to anxious behavior and repeated victory promotes confident behavior, which would then lead to more social victories. On the other hand, it's easier to lose at social challenges if you've already been losing. Do you have a job? No. You got money? No. Do you have a woman? No. <laughs> you got anything on the horizon? Uh, no. Kids who are bullied or victimized by their peers, that is, they are presented with a dominance challenge and then defeated, these kids develop symptoms of social anxiety, which makes them more likely to be bullied in the future because they act more submissive, and submissive kids are more likely to be bullied. These kids then experience more defeat, perceive themselves as being lower and lower on the social hierarchy, and they become less comfortable with new social interactions. They are less confident, become more anxious, and have more depressed mood, which are all symptoms of low testosterone. So this is also why it's very difficult often when you're trying to treat someone who's depressed because you could say there's not much difference between being depressed and existing in the biochemical state that being at the bottom of the dominance hierarchy would produce. Well then the question is are you depressed or are you just at the bottom of a dominance hierarchy? That, like the, the symptomatology is very very similar. In fact, giving depressed men testosterone in the form of a gel has been found to have an antidepressant effect on them. Unfortunately, low testosterone has all kinds of other negative effects, including a worsened body composition, that is, more fat and less muscle. So the point here is that experiencing social defeat and being lower on the social hierarchy usually means lower testosterone. So here's what I'm wondering. Does scrolling through a feed of people who are more successful, richer, more muscular, better looking and doing cooler things than you make you perceive yourself as lower in the social hierarchy and then lower your testosterone. Comparing ourselves to others is a natural tendency for people and it can have an effect on our happiness. Just like a monkey being pissed when his colleague gets a grape whereas he only gets a stupid cucumber, this study titled Keeping Up With The Joneses found that people's satisfaction with their salaries is not totally based on just how much money they're getting but how much more money or how much less money they're getting compared to the people they know. So then, how many people should we be comparing ourselves to? The other interesting thing about Robin Dunbar's research is that his work calculates that there is a cognitive limit to the amount of friends or acquaintances our brains can keep track of, and that limit 
is 150 people. Dunbar gives several examples of human groups hitting a limit of between 100 and 200 people. For example, looking at the census data for around 20 hunter-gatherer tribes, the mean tribe size was 153 people. The estimated size of English villages in 1086 according to the Domesday Book was around 150. Dunbar and a colleague examined the exchange of Christmas cards in the UK and found that the maximum Christmas card network was 153 people. Then, a 2008 study gathering data from 18,000 brides found that the average number of wedding guests at a wedding was 148. Naturally, we probably can't help but compare ourselves to those 150 people we know and then establish mentally where we rank in the different social hierarchies these people belong to. Sure, new people would come and go, but how does it affect us to pick up our phones and expose ourselves to the lives of hundreds of people a week and then have to calculate theirs and our positions on the social hierarchy? Going back to this study that found that monkeys would pay cherry juice to see higher ranked males, they found that when it came to lower ranked males, those monkeys would not pay at all to see them. In fact, the researchers had to bribe the monkeys with cherry juice to get them to even look at the lower ranked monkeys. Now, let's be honest. Do any of you browse Instagram for accounts of random, non-artistic, average looking strangers with average jobs? We're mostly going to look at Instagram accounts of people who we feel to be higher status than us, and maybe meme accounts. So, is spending your time looking at higher status people going to make you feel like you're higher or lower on the social hierarchy? To my knowledge, there's no study looking at how Instagram directly affects your testosterone. But my point is that we should consider testosterone to be a positive feedback loop, like spinning a wheel. You can do things that add momentum and spin the wheel faster, or you can do things that apply the brakes a little bit. Testosterone is cyclical. If your testosterone is higher, your mood should be better, and you'll have more motivation to go to the gym, which helps maintain a healthy body composition. And exercise, as well as having a healthy body composition, are linked to higher testosterone. In general, men with higher testosterone seem to earn more money. And specifically, a study on stockbrokers found that they were more successful on the days that their testosterone was higher. Money then gives rise to a perception of success, which is a component of prestige, and higher prestige is associated with higher testosterone. And as mentioned earlier, men with higher testosterone are more likely to interact with women they're attracted to, and interacting with women raises men's testosterone. In short, Raising testosterone makes it easier to do the things that will further raise testosterone. Unfortunately, having lower testosterone will make it easier to be in the situations that lower your testosterone further. So I'd say to just keep an eye on how Instagram makes you feel. If you feel no difference between using Instagram and not using it, maybe it doesn't have such a negative effect on your psyche or your physiology. But let's say you're feeling good feeling like a winner, feeling kind of like someone with high testosterone because of your success at the gym, work, or in your social life, or at chess. And then you go on Instagram and see someone else who is winning so much harder than you at that thing. If that makes you feel less like a winner and worsens your mood, maybe you should give Instagram a break. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I have an Instagram. So if you'd like to be jealous of the oysters or goosefish liver I'm eating, or the papers or books I'm reading, feel free to follow me. You can also find me on Twitter. And if you'd like to keep up with other things I'm reading about, be sure to sign up for my newsletter or for my Patreon. A study is done on 250 people who claim they have psychic abilities. A regular deck of cards has an equal number of red and black cards. The deck is shuffled, and each person predicts the color of the card on top. Then they take a look and see if they're right. This is repeated eight times in a row. One participant gets all eight predictions correct. The researcher claims that this person has indeed exhibited psychic abilities. So, based on just the way the experiment is designed, is the researcher's claim a viable hypothesis? If you'd like to know the answer, you'll have to check out Brilliant's Statistics Fundamentals course. 
If you're naturally curious or want to build your problem solving or analytical abilities, you'll enjoy Brilliant's thought-provoking math, science, and computer science content designed to break complex scientific concepts down into understandable chunks, like this lesson on neural networks. It takes you from how a computer learns to play tic-tac-toe up to how artificial neurons are trained. With over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science, Brilliant will grow your understanding of our modern world with a structured and engaging approach. Check out brilliant.org slash W-I-L and the first 200 people to follow my link will get 20% off the annual subscription.